Hey future fresh meat, I mean freshmen, welcome to the Academies of Englewood. I'm Zeline. And I'm Nicole. And I'm Jesse, a year above you, so I get to pick on you guys. Anyways, I'm sure you've heard of Frost Valley. It's the first freshman trip of the year, and it's really fun. You get to meet a lot of new people, make new friends, and you get to get out of school. You see, me and Zelina are from Englewood. And I'm from Virgin Field. But because of the Frost Valley trip, we all became close friends despite where we live. Now I know you guys have plenty of friends by now, but you'll practically meet every single freshman around the school. I remember the freshman Philly trip. The freshman trip to Philadelphia was so fun. It usually happens in late March when spring starts to kick in. You get to go to the Franklin Institute and explore the several aspects of science in the real world. Yep, and we even went up the steps that Rocky Balboa took in the movie Rocky. But best of all, we had all the time to ourselves to travel around Philadelphia. We walked around the city and visited a bunch of places preserved and known in history. We even got to visit Edgar Allan Poe's house. Yeah, and some of us got to visit the Liberty Bell, Independence Hall, the African American Museum, and the House of Betsy Ross, the first woman to create the American flag. Also, we can't forget about March Madness! What's March Madness? You know, March Madness! March Madness is a special event that lasts the entire month of March. It's a time when all five academies compete against each other in a battle for points. Every day during school, students dress up according to the themes that are designated for that particular day. It's really fun and you win a ton of points for your academy. Not to mention there's a special event on the last day of school called Game Day. Students gather together in their respectful academies and compete in a game show in order to garner the maximum amount of points possible. The academy with the most points at the end of the month will win a pizza party. Biomed P.E. Biomed P.E. Biomed P.E. I can do Biomed! There are a bunch of classes here at DMA. This is one of the history classrooms. This is the art room. This is the American Lit room. These are the biology rooms. This is the ethics room. And this is the technology room. And so much more. So anyways, I bet you haven't heard of the triple threat. Wait, what? The Triple Threat, Miss G, Miss Arrington, Miss Wardice. Miss Gusseron, or as many people call her, Miss G, is a really fun teacher. She makes learning biology lessons really easy and teaches in various ways just to provide her students the best understanding of her lessons. But don't think that she's an easy A teacher because she will go hard on you. Miss Aronson is the toughest history teacher you'll ever meet. Her work is pretty demanding and you can't just give half of your credit in any of her assignments. She'll grade you really harshly. And I mean harshly. Cut. But she's my favorite teacher. And of course, Miss Fordyce. She will not feel sorry for you. you get your homework or your dog ate it or you left it at home. You did it and you have it in, in class or you didn't do it at all. She will not accept excuses like that because she knows that her students are capable of doing her homework. You know, they're not all as bad as people say they are, but you still have to work really hard to achieve the grades you really want. That means you have to, and I mean have to work. You can't hold off your assignments until the last minute. High school doesn't work that way. Yeah, don't procrastinate. It's the worst thing you could do to yourself that could harm your grade drastically. So Jesse, can you share some of your experiences of procrastination? It's really stressful. Trying to any everything into a small amount of time makes the work come out worse than it would have if you done it over a long time. Anyways, since this is an end of the year American literature project, here are some works that we've studied over the year. At the beginning of the year, we've studied some Native American creation stories. These stories explain how the world was made and originated from our world's earliest settlers. These stories had connections with nature and provided readers with a sense of what Native Americans believed as part of their religion. The next topic we studied was Puritanism. Puritanism was the beliefs and practices that originated from the Puritans. These people believed that they were born evil and that God was angry at them and they were bound to go to hell. For these beliefs, it affected the lifestyle of the Puritans. Puritans during the 1600s were very hardworking people because they believed that if they worked enough on earth, God would give them a better afterlife. Some of the works involving Puritanism were Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, The Minister's Black Veil, and The Crucible. Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God describe the basic beliefs of Puritans in a strongly persuading sense to instill a feeling of fear in the people who read it. Now, in The Minister's Black Veil, it told the story of a minister who takes his life into his own matters and spends the rest of his life wearing a black veil. And last but not least, The Crucible. It tells of the crazy events going on in Salem during the Puritan era in which young girls have been discovered of worshipping the devil. This, in turn, causes massive hysteria among the people of Salem and turns the town into a bloody witch hunt. And now, the Romantic Era. 
I must go. No, I love you too much. No, I must go. It's for the best. How can it be for the best if we love each other so much? You're right. I will stay. Wait! Stop. That's not what the romantic era is about. The Romantic Era was a special time period in which people themselves became the focal point of literature. They focused more on themselves than society. This war was an era after the Revolutionary War where they actually had time to relax and analyze their lives. Emphasis was put more on inner feelings and emotions of the individual. There were different groups of writers, the Transcendentalists, the Anti-Transcendentalists, and the Fireside Poets. Let's start with the Transcendentalists. Emerson's works titled Self-Reliance and Nature explain these concepts, stating that the individual is more valuable than society and that nature is a teacher we can go to to achieve a renewed sense of being. Okay guys. Whoa, where are we? Nature walk! I remember when we read Walden? Oh yeah, Henry David Thoreau. Didn't he live in the woods for like two years? Yes, oh my god, that is so impossible today. I cannot live without my computer but Thoreau survived off the means of nature. In the writing of Walden, he spoke of his many experiences in nature and of the various concepts of life that we don't really come to acknowledge today. He spoke of solitude versus loneliness. Solitude was a state of mind in which the individual was content of being alone. In a way, you're in a good mood when you're in solitude. Loneliness, on the other hand, was a feeling or emotion, a lack of connection among other people and it was usually depressing. Also, he repeated simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. There is no need to make things in life more complicated than they already are. Make things as simple as possible. Focus on one task at a time instead of multitasking and fretting that you won't be able to get anything done. The next project we did relating to transcendentalist beliefs was nonconformity day. It was an awkward day for everyone because everyone was nonconformist. Based on Emerson's concept of nonconformity and consistency, don't join the bandwagon and be like everyone else. As Emerson wrote, foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds, adored with little statesmen and philosophers and divines. So, girl, how you doing? Um, could you guys like stop yelling in my ear? Nah, girl, you be tripping. Can you guys shut up? Guys, we have to no, like, wait, cheer no, up! No, no, no. no. Girl, you gotta stop. No. <laughs> well, the next topic we study about was anti-transcendentalism. Anti-transcendentalism is pretty much the opposite of transcendentalism. Anti-transcendentalists believe that nature was a hostile force and that people were born evil. Other beliefs were that society became corrupt as more people came together. Nathaniel Hawthorne, one of America's greatest writers, was the author of The Scarlet Letter, The Minister's Black Veil, and Young Goodman Brown. He wrote many stories involving characters from the Puritan era, despite himself being born after this time. He took great interest in the Puritans, and his interest in Puritanism is evident in his, his story, Young Goodman Brown. This story takes place shortly after the Salem Witch Trials. In Young Goodman Brown, the main character, Goodman Brown, sets out on a journey by himself to meet with someone who turns out to be the devil. Goodman Brown, who is tempted by the devil, gets lured into a horrific devil-worshipping ceremony, to which the prize he ends up waking up outside. As a class, we debated whether his encounter with the devil and de devil worshipping was real or a dream. Another author we studied about was Poe. Poe is greatly known for his poem, The Raven, as well as many of his short stories like The Telltale Heart and The Fall of the House of Usher. During his time, he went against the popular beliefs of nature, the individual, and society, and wasn't always successful with his works. If you've read some of his writings, you could probably point out some of his personal issues. Not only do his works convey parts of himself, but his word choice and the way his works are structured are also rather remarkable. That's right. In the poem The Raven, it told of a man who lost his love Lenore and he encounters a mysterious raven one night. When he takes amusement in the raven, the raven surprisingly speaks its only known language of nevermore. The man in turn asks the raven questions about his, lo his love Lenore, to which the raven responds nevermore. Having gone mad and having such scorn for himself, the man throws himself in a dreadful fit that his love will never return while the raven continues to mock him. We study the poem's structure and interesting rhyme scheme that Poe used. His choice of words also made the poem more meaningful, and he even slipped in some onomatopoeia to convince the sounds and certain things described in the poem. Another piece of literature we studied was The Fall of the House of Usher. This story was about a man who visits the house of his childhood friend, Roderick Usher. 
However, there's something up the state about this house and its inhabitants. Poe focuses on the single effect theory, the idea that the reader should be exposed to one entire effect throughout the whole story. We also study the writing style of the story and how Poe describes the story with such detail to convey his ideas to the reader. Also in the story, Poe's personal issues of being buried alive and death are shown in the story. Not to mention, we also read Annabelle Lee. This poem was about the great love between the narrator and Annabelle Lee, a love that even the angels of the highest ranks in heaven would envy for. Unfortunately, because of nature's doing, Annabelle Lee had become his lost love as her family takes her away from him. Yet, the narrator continues to convey his unconditional love to the lost Annabelle Lee. In this poem, many of us initially thought that Poe had written it with a positive feeling, but through thoroughly reading it and discussing the poem, we came to realize that this lovey-dovey piece divulged such a horrible tragedy. Okay. There you go. There you go. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, no. She raised her hand. She's like, No, No, No! Okay. Go ahead. And now, the romantic era. Go. There were different groups of writers. Sonic! <laughs> 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 uh, okay. Emerson's works. Wait, hold up. Must. Okay, go ahead. And teaches in various ways And that. Sorry, it's a bus. Curse you, bus! This <laughs> Go. Sorry. It's a go. Baby, let me love you down. There's so many ways to love you.